Hello, and this will be an instructional video on removal and installation of the parabolic slings in a Sterling lounge chair. The process of which will be used in the dining chair, the lounge chair, the gliding love seats, and swivel chairs. Uh, to start with, we're going to need some simple tools. We have a standard rubber mallet, you're going to need that, a pair of sharp scissors, a couple screwdrivers, you're going to need a flat blade screwdriver and a Phillips head screwdriver, as well as a small tipped flat blade screwdriver we're going to be using in the very beginning in the removal process. We do have a utility knife we're going to be utilizing. We have a screen installation tool that you can pick up at many local hardware stores. A small plastic putty knife. Uh, plastic is very important due to the fact that if you steal or uh, any type of metal, you could damage the sling. We are using uh, some wooden paint stir sticks. Use any pieces of, of wood that are smaller in size that can help you with the installation. We also have a piece of fabric that we're going to be needing to use. Also with the chair you should have your replacement sling and replacement retainer cord. Uh, for the removal process, I'm going to first I'm going to take this frame off the table here, set it on the floor, make it easier for the removal. I'm going to take my rag, my flat blade screwdriver, the small flat blade screwdriver. We are going to start by removing the retainer. Now this frame is unique to wooded frames because the parabolic sling has a retainer that runs on the outsides of the frame that we got to remove before the sling is removed. First thing you want to do is you take your rag. The rag is going to be used just as a protector for the frame finish. That way the true driver when you're taking the retainer out does not mar the finish or damage it in any way. So you take your uh, piece of fabric here, put it on the edge of the finish, Take your flat blade screwdriver, very carefully and slowly, rock it back and forth until you get underneath that retainer. Start prying it up while keeping a nice solid tension on the screwdriver and the rag so that way it does not rub against that finish. And start prying it up until that retainer comes out. Once you get to a certain point, you then can use your hand nice and easily pull that retainer out. Once the top is out, then we're going to start working on the sides. The sides, you basically take the same process. So you're going from the side, you're going from the top. Again, put the fabric on the frame. Take the screwdriver, work it in underneath the retainer. So we'll start prying it out. You got to be very slow and careful when doing this. Straight out. It will be kind of difficult getting around this curve. Once you get past the curve, the retainer will come up fairly quickly. We'll repeat the process for the opposite side. Now, once the tension is gone, the opposite side is actually extremely easy. So the sling should just come straight out. Now, if you have not damaged your retainer cord too badly, you might want to save it, so you might reuse it, or you might use the retainer for the you have with your kit. But these are already cut to length and trimmed, so they might come in handy if they're still in good use. Take the old sling down the side. Now, to remove the lower seat portion, same process. You want to remove the retainer first, then remove the sling. We're actually going to start with the back because the back and the front are actually going lengthwise and they bury the side retainer, so it's a little more difficult. Uh, the back is also a good place to start because that way it releases tension to the front, because that way we have to worry about marring the finish of the front of the frame. Again, use the fabric as a protectant for the frame. Now again, this one you gotta be really patient with because this is under a lot of tension in the back. Sometimes there's a bit of weld back there, so it can be kind of difficult to get that screwdriver in. So you gotta keep pressing that fabric in there to get in there nice and snug so it won't mess up the finish. And this one being a bit of there. Again, just work it out nice and slow. You can use upward tension and slide it. 
can with smell. Now I'm going to rotate the frame a little bit towards me here. Take up the front retainer. Please grab it down. Same as the other ones. You're going to notice once you start removing some of these retainers, the slings going to lose tension and be much easier to work with. When it's under tension, it's putting pressure on the retainers. It makes them more difficult. Now once the front and back are removed, very carefully remove the sides. Now the seat, because it's captured on all four sides, work the front out and the back, you're going to have to cinch over and back to get the retainer out of there. Once the seat's removed, go ahead and discard the sling. So we'll go ahead and put it back up on the table here. Now the retainer I'm going to talk about for a little bit. The retainer you took out, go ahead and discard those as well. The retainer that we use is very unique. It has an inside and an outside that you've got to make sure you use. As you look at the retainer, it's kind of goes down to a point with a grab edge and a top edge. This point edge on the outside will always go on the outside of the frame. It will never go on the inside because that's where it grabs on and holds onto the frame. So you got to make sure when you use this to make sure that edge is always on the outside. I'll make sure to point out that whenever I'm doing the installation. All right, from this point, when we started installing our new sling, you got to make sure you do it in a specific order. You cannot put the back in first. You must put the seat in first because the back will cover up portions of the seat. It'll make the seat installation extremely difficult. Start off your base sling. You're going to notice some of your cores are a little long. Now the curvature of the sling, you have an inside and outside in the front and back. The outside or the bottom of the sling will have the edges of the material. And the front and back, the curvature will tell you the front and back. Now this chair, the curves will always point to the back. So the curves going towards the back of the frame. Well, first thing I want to do is take your cords, get them away from the front of the sling so they're all more pushed towards the back. That's going to help with the insulation down the road. Once you're there, if there's any, if this front sling is a little bit long, you can trim it up a little bit, but it will, this sling will stretch during installation. Once you got that point settled, now we got to cut our retainers for the seat. We have a retainer on a spool. You will get yours in a length. It will not be on a spool. So I'm going to show you how you measure how much you need to cut. Take your retainer, again, that edge on the outside. And we're going to start with just the seat. And you're going to have four individual retainers, two of which will be the same length, and two of which will be different lengths. Start with the front. You take your retainer, you stick it in the channel, feed it down through the channel, Note the point where it stops. Well, keep the pressure down to make sure it's straight. Go with your finger, pull it out, use your scissors, and cut about an inch longer than where your thumb is. That's your first cut. That's my front, so I'm going to put that in the front of my frame. The next piece I'm going to cut is the back. Again, same thing. Take the retainer, stick it in the frame, slide it through. Mark with your thumb, point, grab your scissors, again about an inch longer, that point, and the back. Now your sides are going to be matching, right and left, it should be the identical length. So once you get one measurement down, squeeze it into the frame, make sure it's pressed down, mark with your finger, Cut an inch longer, 
Take that same piece. Line up both ends at the end. Pull it tight. Walk your hands out so there's no slipping of the pieces. Cut the next piece identical length to your first one. And these will be your sides. And what I do is I'll stick these off to the side so that way I won't get my three mixed up. My front is in the front, back in the back. My side pieces are on the outside. Once you have your uh, retainer cut to proper length, we're going to start the installation of the seat sign. You're going to start in one corner, work your way to a diagonal point to the opposite corner. How we do that is very simple. We take our sling. Again, curvature goes towards the back, long side front. You place a corner into the frame. Now you got to do a little trim work on the retainer itself. You need to cut a 45 degree angle on the piece on the end, a little bit on the front. Again, make sure that point is to the outside of the frame. And you're going to start by holding with your thumb, then you're going to take one of the wooden pieces here, you're going to press it into the corner. Once that corner is started, it's pretty simple to get the rest of the retainer in. Once you get the front piece in, just to hold it in nice and tight, we're going to start on the sides. Now we're going to use a secondary piece of wood on the side, and press the sling into the frame, just to get it started for us. Kind of rock it back in there to make sure that material gets tucked into the channel properly. Like so. Make sure that's in there nice and snug. And you're going to take your retainer cord. Start it in. <coughs> you're going to take your rubber mallet. Tap it in. Now is the point where you're going to use your flat blade screwdriver to push the fabric out of the way in the channel so that way the retainer cord can scoot by. Kind of hard to see, but I'll show you shortly. And what you do is you just press the cord up, again, using that wood piece to make sure it locks in, in about a quarter of the way. At this point, as you can see, the retainer cord is a little longer than I want it, so I'm going to trim that little excess off. You don't want to have too much of that internal cord. You want pretty much the corners to be free of that. Press it in, get almost to the corner here. Now we're going to start this side. Now this way this material works is it works on the pressure of the stretch. So as you can see the retainer is going to pop out just a bit, nothing to be worried about. Again, you're going to push this one in to hold it. Now again, with your retainer, you got to trim up the front just to make sure it's at nice 45. Again, that edge needs to be on the outside of the frame, so make sure you trim the correct edge. Then we're going to go ahead, slide this into place. patient a little bit, it will take some finagling to get it in there. Those corners do have a lot of material in them. So Once you get that side piece started, now we're going to finish doing the front. As you can see, the front is a little longer. That's okay, we want to trim that up. But again, it's going to be an eyeball process. Cut it at an angle, so that way we will fit in. Go ahead and get it started all the way around. Use the wood strips to kind of press it in. Now 
once you get to the end, where it gets a little difficult. Kind of back off your side piece a little bit to give a little room. Now, if you're using paint stirrers like we're using, be kind of careful when you're hitting it because you don't want to snap the wood. Again, use a screwdriver to cut that material out of the way. It agrees with it. There it goes. Just like that. Now, once you have the front piece in, we're going to continue back to this side and go back up towards the back corner. So for that, I'm actually going to bring it down to give you a better view. And as you see, it looks like the sling is going to be too short, when in fact it is not. The sling will stretch in that direction quite a lot. We're going to take our retainer to the back. Again, cutting 45 degree angles on them so that they may fit a little better inside the frame. I will tell you the seat is much more difficult in the back. So Now, because of where the weld points are and everything, you want to make sure that the retainer cord on the back side is turned up a little shorter, not too much, and the weld is actually going to hold the back stretch in while you put the back piece in and finish this other side. So you're going to actually take it, stretch it, and slide it back. So I'm actually going to lift the frame up here and show you that one more time. As you see, this thing is short. I'm going to take the cord from the back, pull it up, slide it over, and then it'll actually hold it while you get the rest of the retainer in. Kind of hold it with your fingers. Take your retainer. Press it in with your thumb. Take your handy dandy little wood tool here. Now these back corners are kind of tough because they have that weld back there, so you are going to need the assistance of your hammer. Just like that. Once you get it started in there, Bring the rest of the side up, you can see it's going to lock itself in, and as you can see too, it's a long. That's okay. We want to gauge how much we want to trim off. Make sure we get it properly. You do want a little bit of the side retainer pressed in. You're pretty much going to have to inch up the back and inch up the side to get it to work properly. I'm doing this left hand so it's easier for you to see as well. It's taking it a little longer than usual. the back again you're going to be going pushing from side to back side to back what I like to do is feed a little bit in then lock it in the back of the wood tool and just inch your way up nice and easy once you get about halfway is when we're going to start trimming up that inner cord
Now, and you see them about halfway along the back and about a third up the front. And if you look here, the inner cord on both ends are long. So this is about the time when you want to trim those up. You don't want to trim the side one up too short. You want to trim it up so it comes even with this inside edge of the frame. So past that, two inner cords will intersect and make it very difficult to get the retainer in. But if it's short, this thing will pull out. And again, the same thing for the back. Basically, when it stretches, that corner should be the intersection where the two pieces meet. You can see it has no problem stretching that back. Actually, I can use my thumbs and press it in. Once you get the stretch along the back, nice and stretched, then you can go along the sides. On the side, you're going to need to the frame down. Just walk it up. Again, once I get a chunk, take my pressure tool here and just snap it. If you're finding it difficult that it's not snapping in, your retainer might be switched so that little locking edge is not on the outside. Just flip it around and make sure it is. It's a little tedious process, but it's a little trimming, a little working here and there. As you're working it, you're actually going to stretch that inner cord back and forth. So now, one of the problems you're going to run into is the same thing we ran into on that side, where you have all that weld build up on this side. So this corner is going to take a bit of work. So what I like to do is I like to get it almost to that corner and meet the pieces in the middle and inch my way with it without having too much trouble. This back cord and the front cord, they need to go the full distance of the frame. So those are your measurement tools. The front needs to go 